Hey guys, it's Barry here from Barry's Tutoring. Most of you know me uh, as a GAMSAT tutor and my specialty is with section three of the GAMSAT. Today, I'm gonna to go through a video to explain the GAMSAT and intuition. Okay, so a lot of students ask me, is there a place for an intuitive response for section three in particular? Now, first of all, what is intuition? A lot of people describe intuition as a gut feeling, uh, but it's really a quick response. It's a quick decision uh, that your brain makes, okay? Or, it's a, or it could be an action, okay? Now, intuitive responses can be good. And some examples of those that I can explain, uh, let's say in business. So let's say you're a successful business person and you've had many, many years of experience. Well, you're probably going to make some pretty good intuitive snap decisions, okay? Where you don't really need to think too much. But that's because you have a lot of years of experience. Uh, you've seen, you've pretty much seen all the scenarios before and you know how they're going to play out. That's why you don't need to flesh them out so much. Uh, another good example is an intuitive skill. So let's talk about tennis because I like tennis. Um, let's say you've never played tennis before. It's highly unlikely that you're going to be good at tennis from the get-go. But someone who's been training for many, many years at a high level, let's say with a coach, after those years, a lot of those movements, a lot of your, your strokes, positioning of yourself in the court, a lot of that is going to become intuitive, meaning to say you don't really need to think about it, right? You don't need to think about how you're holding the racket or, you know, swinging through um, the ball, all that kind of stuff. Now, with both of these examples, you need, in many cases, years of experience, okay? Years of experience um, and to condition your brain and your body so that you can make those snap decisions, um, those quick judgments and actions. Now, intuition is usually not a good idea for section three. Okay, so for, for most of the students that I see, their gut feeling is often not right. Okay, and there's a, there, there's a reason for that. It's not because of you. It's partly because of the way the questions are written because they take advantage of our intuitive responses. Why is it that our gut feeling is not right? It's because section three of the GAMSAT is assessing certain skills that not everyone has and they haven't developed because of what they are currently studying or uh, working in, okay, the areas that they might be working in. So um, a lot of people who are studying for the GAMSAT, they might be in pre-med degrees or courses or biomed courses, let's say, um, typically, and that requires a lot of rote learning and people are very good at that, okay? But that's a very specific kind of skill. It's the absorbing of copious amounts of information and then the regurgitating of it on exam day. Section three of the GAMSAT is not like that. That's the problem. So even if you're really good at those skills, you know, of, of rote learning, this is almost the polar opposite, okay? So in section three, you need to be able to look at copious amounts of information potentially for the first time and you need to digest that very quickly and to make a logical decision okay that is not something that a lot of people are comfortable with and have a lot of experience with okay so that's why the gut feeling is often going to fail you so i'm going to go through an example just to kind of show you what i mean and it's not even a gamset style question so this is from something called a cognitive reflection test. It is the shortest IQ test and it's been around for a while. In fact, it was designed to really demonstrate this, the fact that your gut response can often fail you. So I'm just gonna go through one of the questions. A bat and a ball cost $1.10 in total. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Now this question is simple enough. And what would happen is most people would give the answer that the ball, let's just, oh, what was the question asking again? <laughs> oh yeah, 
Okay, most people would say that the ball costs 10 cents. Okay, now if you thought that, don't worry, you're in good company. A lot of people think that the answer is 10 cents. And that's because we're using our gut feeling. Okay, I'm trying to get you to respond relatively quickly. And I think it's because, uh, you know, no one really knows why, but I think the reason why a lot of people go with 10 cents is because it's a relatively easy calculation for you to do. So if you were to make a quick snap decision, your brain by default goes, oh, one plus 10 cents is a dollar 10. That's pretty easy. Okay, pretty straightforward. That's probably the answer. So the answer is actually five cents. Okay, I'll just explain it really quickly because remember the total, the total has to be a dollar 10 and the cost of the bat has to be a dollar more than the ball. So if the ball is five cents, that must mean that the bat is a dollar and five cents. So if you add them together, you get your dollar 10. Okay, that's the actual correct response. But I would hazard a guess that most people watching this say from the top of their head, 10 cents. Okay, so what I've demonstrated to you potentially, um, and this is not gonna happen to everyone, but what I've potentially demonstrated to you is that our intuitive response is not always the most logical response. So how can we address this? Well, the core problem is that we need to make a quick snap decision. And when we do this, we are usually using the part of our brain that uh, makes these snap decisions, these intuitive decisions. Okay, which are not always logical. So one thing we can do is to actually slow down our thinking. Okay, now it doesn't mean that we have to take, you know, an hour to kind of think this through, even just you know, taking a few more seconds can help. And to slow down in our thinking, we could use things like a thinking routine. Okay, you can have a look online as to what those are, and there's lots of different ones. But one that I've, I use is a four step process. So number one, we have to define the problem. What is the problem? Number two, we have to make a plan, a plan of attack. What could we do? And then number three, we execute this plan. Okay, so we, we just do it. Okay, we follow through with what we thought uh, would be a good idea to do and try to get our answer. And then number four, we reflect. And usually well, the main question you ask here to yourself is, have I answered the question? Okay. So I would ask myself, what was the question again? Okay. What did, what was my response and do those match up? So by going through a thinking routine like this, okay. And I go through this thinking routine in my AMSAT strategy videos. So if I go through a thinking routine like this, I'm highly likely to pick up on silly mistakes. Um, I'm highly likely to be able to fix some of my intuitive responses. What I'm trying to tell people is you can't change the way that you make these snap decisions. You can't change your gut feeling, but what you can do is you can vet your decisions. Okay. You can actually think about uh, your initial response and go, wait a minute, is that quite right? Okay. And in a lot of cases, that's enough for you to kind of resolve this issue. So let's use the example again with the bat and the ball problem. If I was to define this problem, I would say I've got a bat and a ball. First of all, I need to find the cost of the ball. That is my problem. There are certain conditions for this question, which is I need the bat and the ball's price to add up to $1.10. But there's a second condition. I also need the bat to be a dollar more than the ball. Now I've essentially laid down the whole problem, I think. Uh, so I've tried to define the problem. Okay, plan, what could we do? Well, what you could do, there's several things you can do, right? You could do trial and error. So just pick a few numbers and see if they work. Or you could actually use an algebraic method to solve it. Now for this video, let's just use trial and error and let's assume that we used our intuitive response to begin with. So I might go, all right, let's just try a couple of numbers. A dollar and, and 10 cents comes to mind in terms of the price of the bat and the ball. So we've essentially done it. Okay. That's the execution. We've just uh, taken a few 
uh, numbers and yeah, it seems like it might be the answer. Okay, but we know it's not. Now this is where it's helpful. Let's get to the fourth step. Let's reflect. Did I answer the question? And if I go back to the original thing that I have defined, including the two criteria, what will happen is we should be able to pick up our mistake. So we'll go to our problem. Okay, what's the cost of the ball? Oh, okay, the, the cost of the ball is 10 cents, let's say. Okay, that, that sounds fine. Um, do they add up to $1.10? Yes, they do. A, a dollar plus 10 cents is $1.10. But then when we get to our second criteria and we check it, we go, wait a minute, is the cost of the ball a dollar more than the cost of the bat? And we go, wait a minute, no. Um, if the ball is 10 cents and the bat is a dollar, the bat is 90 cents more than the ball. This is good because then we know that that's not the answer and we can go back to our plan. We can think, okay, could we do it a different way? Or maybe can we try a few different numbers? And then you just go through the steps again. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you would like some more help with thinking routines and applying that with your GAMSAT study, feel free to check out my course on my Teachable website. Just check the description in the video. And yeah, hope your uh, GAMSAT study is going well and I'll see you next time. Thanks.